Okay, thank you. So my name is Chandler Wilkerson. I'm a senior software engineer here at Red Hat. And uh, my presentation is Virtual Machine Infrastructure as Code with Kubert and Argo CD. Uh, so this presentation follows some work that I did on the upstream products first. So I know we're or on the downstream products first. We're, we're probably supposed to do it the other way around, but uh, this is more of an experiment and uh, kind of a making sure that everything that we have in uh, OpenShift works also in raw Kubernetes, especially with the uh, Kubert community project that we, that my team does take part in. Um, and also with the uh, Argo CD where we've done some integration work to help it work with uh, Kubert. And so I'm hoping that this can uh, have some value to everybody watching. Uh, Essentially, the idea here is we can use virtual machines now within Kubernetes, and that's what Kubert brings into the mix. But then giving that a GitOps flare with Argo CD controlling those virtual machines allows you to do interesting things with, uh, for instance, multi-tier applications. Uh, suppose that you have a multi-tier application that runs uh, several virtual machines and you're looking at modernizing that, uh, containerizing pieces of it, but it would be prohibitively difficult to containerize the whole thing in one lockstep and try to get it all working. With uh, this integration work, you can then bring along pieces of the you know, different tiers as virtual machines into a Kubernetes cluster while concentrating on modernizing one piece of it that uh, you know, gives you the most value first. It also gives you some abilities to uh, provide uh, self-service virtual machines for developers in a DevOps model. And there is a lot of potential going forward for using the orchestration and you know, scalability of Kubernetes to drive uh, virtual desktop infrastructures. And another interesting use case is to fit uh, virtual machines as a component in a pipeline. So you spin up a virtual machine, it does its work, and then spins down and have that you know, analogous to a container in a uh, you know, CI CD kind of pipeline. So I kind of wanted to start by telling a bit of a story about, you know, kind of my past as a systems administrator and you know, like how I've seen the field kind of grow and, and change. So off in the beginning, we had this kind of concept where you'd have uh, systems administrators who would very much be territorial about the servers and services that they would run. And they would kind of consider them kind of like pets or you know, like a handcrafted kind of product. So you would have configurations, you know, they would go in and modify the configuration. It could be different on every machine. You know, there was a certain artsmanship, you know, craftsmanship to it. Uh, but of course it has some drawbacks. Um, if you made a mistake while crafting your configurations, uh, sometimes you would have to come back from, uh, from tape backup in order to restore the machine. You know, if you're lucky, in some cases, the uh, systems administrators, if you're trying to look over another um, system in's work, you might find that they've locally managed to use uh, change management uh, and have uh, RCS or that kind of uh, repository for, for files on the server itself, but not necessarily centrally managed. And that's where you get uh, kind of personality conflicts with things. And of course, if you wanted to avoid downtime, you had to duplicate, uh, you know, so still we were talking about physical servers, uh, the drawback of, you know, having all your services on physical servers is if you want high availability, that means you buy another server and then set up a cluster around that. So things got better. We, we went to virtualization. So that got us around having to buy multiple servers to arrange high availability. And it got us around uh, a single server's hardware failure, taking down an entire infrastructure piece. Uh, we started using configuration management. Um, 
more and more uh, piecemeal. And so Puppet and Ansible allowed us to homogenize servers. And so you eventually got into this mode where you know, the servers became more like cattle, not pets. Um, I'm sure many have heard that analogy. But essentially, the way I think of it is the place into which you apply your craftsmanship as a systems administrator or as a, you know, as a burgeoning DevOps administrator would be more on the configuration management side. And so you can put your craft there and then have the, the actual servers be um, just units in, a, in the uh, orchestration. And so then as you go on, uh, we get into the modern age where we have containers and Kubernetes and everything is almost ephemeral. You have this concept of eventually correct configuration with Kubernetes where you can define how you want it to be and Kubernetes will strive to make it so. And that gives us a, a lot of advantage over where we were with even uh, managing virtual machines. But of course, there are still points where you want to manage virtual machines. And so the two pieces that I want to talk about today are that uh, GitOps puzzle piece and the uh, Kubert puzzle piece that bring virtual machines into a Kubernetes cluster. So starting with Argo CD and the GitOps piece, we have this uh, kind of interesting idea where you have um, an application at the center of your, your kind of plan for uh, services on a cluster. And that application ties into a repository. So you, you generally go to Git or a Git repositories, um, very often GitHub. And then you have this idea of a target configuration that you want to maintain onto the cluster from that uh, Git repository. And then you have your, you know, your target cluster where, where you're putting things. And so that's, these are the pieces that Argo CD sees. And so then it goes in synchronizes according to what's in the Git repo and then puts it onto the cluster. So with Kubevert, essentially everything is uh, an operator-based uh, structure. And so you have a, an additional set of uh, custom resources. You have uh, an operator or several operators that handle uh, API calls and uh, then there's uh, a daemon set that goes onto the nodes and handles uh, virtual machines on the nodes. And every virtual machine gets its own BERT launcher. And so essentially, the, the basic idea there is for KubeVirt, you have uh, a virtual machine running in a pod. And then we have custom resources wrapped around those pods in order to allow them to be managed in, in the Kubernetes way. And the first of those actually is more around, it's a wrapper around uh, uh, PVCs, which are the data volumes. And then you have the, the virtual machine. So I have an example of a virtual machine here. And you can see it's pretty much a standard uh, kind of Kubernetes uh, YAML. And the core of it is this template. And with the, the template, you're essentially defining what will eventually be a virtual machine instance. So once you instantiate and set to running your virtual machine, then this template gets expressed and then that becomes a virtual machine. And a lot of the fields in here very closely match what you might see in the XML of a libvirt uh, VM guest. So you have the domain, you have networks, you have volumes going back to the, the data volumes. So what I'd like to show today, and just a little bit of uh, you know, what I have set up with a, a previous um, project that I did on uh, OpenShift virtualization and OpenShift GitOps. So I've kind of I've ported this into a Kubernetes cluster with uh, Argo CD uh, from upstream and then uh, Kubevert from upstream. Uh, my applications that I'm running with Argo CD is uh, working with an app of apps kind of model. And so the, the idea that 
you know, if you have a long list of applications, why not make another application that will make sure that those applications are there? And so you have a tree and a kind of hierarchical kind of setup. And so what I'll be showing is uh, just a little bit briefly to, to demonstrate the, um, the actual data volume side of things and then uh, the virtual machines. And so this is the repository that I'm working out of. And so Argo CD just goes straight to that repository. There's a set of directories on there that uh, correspond to each of these applications. And then I have a local one node Kubernetes cluster. And so this is the Argo CD control panel. And this is the less list of uh, applications that are already on the cluster. I figured I didn't want to tempt demo troubles by having it go completely from scratch. So I've already got this provisioned and everything is already running and healthy. This is the app of apps. So essentially you have your, your one application that says I want to have all these other applications present. And any of those you can drill down So you can see on, on the main screen, you can go into the app and see what it's actually running. So these are all the pods and different resources created by Kubevert when it installs. These are the data volumes that I'm experimenting with or demonstrating. I have one for CentOS 8 stream and I have one for Fedora and I think that was uh, 35, so pretty recent one. And then I have two virtual machines using the CentOS and the Fedora images. And so as you create the, the virtual machine, um, Argo CD notices all the other uh, associated resources that get created and so it tracks them as well. Let's start out by grabbing the virtual machines, seeing that we've got two running. You can see where they are and we can get into the console of this one. Remember the password that I've set. So right now we're running a two gig uh, memory. Info, thank you. So we have one, or actually two processors. And so this is all defined in the Git repository. So I'm using customize uh, to, to deploy everything because I want to make it work with either um, Kubernetes or OpenShift. Uh, I haven't gone back and re-added the, the OpenShift side of this, but this is the, uh, the upstream side of it. And so we have a customization here that points at the base, uh, adds a, uh, a little bit of RBAC to ensure that we can pull images from a, a certain namespace, which is kind of the model that's behind uh, OpenShift virtualization. We, we have a common namespace into which we load OS images. And then when you clone a, a virtual machine, you clone that image. And then we have some uh, extra patches to make sure that those images come from the right namespace. So in the base, we actually have the YAML for the VMs themselves. And see so our two core, two gig of RAM server. And so just as an example of what you can do 
with GitOps driving your VMs, you can go in and change this. So we will give it four and four, four cores, four gigs of RAM. Okay, then we go back to the Argo CD panel and we tell it to refresh its view of the repo. And real quickly, it'll notice that it's out of date, but because we have automatic sync on, it'll just as quickly synchronize it. Now, here, here's where it's a little bit different from pods. So when you're dealing with a configuration manager or actually a um, GitOps kind of flow like Argo CD, and you're using traditional container-based applications, you can make a change to the repository. And as soon as it syncs, it terminates the current pod, brings, or you know, starts to bring up another one, terminates the pod, and makes sure that uh, your configuration is correct. With virtual machines, it doesn't quite take that initiative. So as we can see, nothing really has changed here. We could reboot this within its own uh, pod, but because rebooting wouldn't necessarily change the the running uh, configuration, you would boot back up with the same uh, resources. However, shut down. We'll see that we have a finished. VMI, and now we have a new VMI up and running. And give it a little bit of time to come back up. Now we have four gigs of RAM. And four processors. So you see, it's, it's not quite as easy as DevOps, but with a little bit more, you know, more of a reasonable way of working with around virtual machines. And suppose we had a problem with uh, getting into the virtual machine in order to, to change it. If, if we're just using this in a pipeline, you actually can go in here or even in, uh, into the virtual machine instance. And you can use the Argo CD panel just to kill one. And it likes to, at least in the panel, it likes to make sure that you've, uh, oh, it's not asking for the confirmation. It, it asks for a confirmation. You have to type in the name of the resource if it's a uh, defined resource, but it, this is a sub resource of a defined one, so it didn't do that to me. And you see that uh, that shuts down the VM uh, just as if it were uh, in a virtual machine infrastructure and you said shut down. And again, it's brought it back up and running. Okay, and there are other things that we can do. Uh, we go back to applications. There's one more piece that I kind of wanted to demonstrate on the data volume. And I'm just, I'm going to set this off and not really let it go because this may take longer than we have in the demo in order to actually download because these are 1.4, 1.3 gig images. So if you see in the, the data volume, you can kind of look at the manifest that's on the cluster right now, we have this URL dedicated. And this one's a little bit old. It's from uh, last June. And I just checked today, and we have a, a nice new uh, CentOS stream image from, 
from this, uh, actually, this uh, January. So I'm going to change to the data volumes directory, edit that YAML. of it. Now there's one from 2022. Wow, that's pretty recent. Okay. Okay, back to Argo CD. We refresh. And now it's trying to apply the, the change. And a little bit of an admission here. I didn't test this before, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen, whether I need to delete the PVC first, just like in the VM, or if I need to, or if it'll handle it itself. And look at all the DBs. It seems to still be holding on that it has the old one. So we can look at what's going on and see the diff of the manifest. Like, sure enough, there's a difference. And so it's not taking that, which probably means we need to delete this and let it recreate it. And now, since this one is actually managed by GitOps, it wants me to type its name. Okay. And now you can see the, the, the icon may not be too clear to everybody, but now that it is completely missing from the system, there's a little ghost. And so we say sync. Oh, it's already syncing. So if that isn't working, we can terminate the current sync, assuming that it was set off with uh, with the resource still present. And now we can synchronize and it'll start loading. And so as you see here is it's created the PVC already and it's assigned an importer pod to it. And you can see in here just why this might take a long time. So we can leave that running. And of course, in the meantime, the cloned version in the VMs shouldn't be affected at all. So this VM should still be running. But as soon as that pod finishes and as soon as that uh, new data volume is ready, we could actually delete this one and uh, from here and then have it recreate on the, the brand new image and we'd have a new virtual machine. And I think I'm getting really close on time. So I just wanted to conclude with some links. Um, I do want to mention the Kuvert community is having a summit in three weeks. And if you go to kuvert.io slash summit, you can register for that. It's free. It's online only. And this is a link to the blog post for the OpenShift virtualization, OpenShift uh, GitOps version of this particular work. And thank you all.